students to the online NPTEL course uh, user interface design. Uh, today uh, we, uh, we are uh, discussing, uh, we were discussing the visual uh, communication design part and which is the high fidelity and how to uh, translate the design, uh, low fidelity design into high fidelity design with the colors and uh, all other visual communication uh, design um, elements. So uh, today we will talk about the typography which is uh, one of the intrinsic part of uh, visual communication design. Colors, uh, shapes, uh, lines along with the other uh, vi visual communication design part, typography uh, plays a very vital role in the uh, GUI or the graphic user interface of the web interface design. So uh, in typography we will take two lectures to discuss the uh, typography uh, and what is the use of typography into um, user interface design. Uh, so first we will talk about the evolution of typography that will help you to understand which typefaces uh, to select when we uh, uh, want to capture a particular visual uh, style. So uh, the typeface, if, if the visual style you want to portray a uh, um, visual style which is uh, not so contemporary, which has an old style, so that uh, uh, you have to also select the typeface which uh, match with the style of the visual. Uh, so that's why uh, evolution of typography, uh, knowing uh, uh, the this part is important. Then morphology of type, uh, typography, what are the different parts of a, a typeface, how, what is um, the excite, the uh, ascenders, descenders and how the type, uh, uh, how we can classify a typeface, that is the uh, morphology part of typefaces. Then uh, based on this morphology, how we classify the typefaces, so sans serif, serif and within sans serif, what are the uh, different categories and within serifs, what are the different categories that we will discuss in the lecture one. And in the next lecture, we will discuss uh, how to incorporate these uh, different typefaces into the design. So what is the pic uh, pictorial quality of the typefaces and how the legibility and pictorial quality uh, differs, uh, how uh, when you increase the pictorial quality, how the legibility will uh, get affected How uh, and when you um, want to increase the legibility, how the pictorial quality uh, gets affected. Then the selection of uh, and the design of typefaces when you want to design a particular typeface which might not be uh, your main forte but uh, when you select a typeface and you want to uh, digitally iterate the typeface a little bit uh, to suit with your visual style then uh, this part you uh, need to know. Then uh, the impact of color selection within the typeface also how the legibility affect when you select a particular color and when you um, put a type uh, typeface, uh, uh, assign a particular color to a typeface and to a particular background and how this figure ground relationship uh, works in uh, the legibility of the typefaces. And then achieving hierarchy. So uh, when you create a um, uh, front end design, uh, different information will have a different um, hierarchy. Some information will have a um, higher hierarchy, some information will have uh, the low, uh, next level hierarchy. So uh, there will be different uh, levels of hierarchy, how you can achieve with the different kind of um, typefaces. It might not be just uh, the size of typefaces, it can be also a different um, category, different classification of typeface can also uh, give you the hierarchy, color contrast and other things uh, can also give you, uh, uh, help you to achieve this hierarchy. So we'll start with the evolution of typefaces. So we'll go uh, go to the history and how the type um, typefaces evolved. So initially, uh, the typography and the typefaces started evolving when uh, people uh, uh, started um, chiseling um, on the uh, adobe plate which uh, happens in Mesopotamia or they wanted to, uh, they uh, started carving a uh, marble stone um, in case of Roman and Greek um, civilization or uh, with the calligraphic uh, pen which uh, they uh, started inscribing on the uh, papyrus or the paper which is there in the uh, uh, you, you can say in uh, Chinese uh, origin. So here we can see the material on which they are typing and the tools and techniques creates an impact of the particular typefaces. Now we will talk about the Roman or the English uh, typefaces uh, more, uh, mostly, uh, in, uh, only concentrating on the English uh, typefaces. So they, uh, they also evolved from the, um, the tools and techniques, uh, the way uh, people uh, started um, using it. Uh, so, and uh, after that, when uh, there was uh, this renaissance time, uh, Johannes Gutenberg uh, 
invented uh, the printing press which is around uh, early 15th century and in this case uh, it was uh, the style of his first printed books which is um, uh, the uh, Gutenberg's Bible uh, it had the influence of the calligraphic uh, tradition because before that a uh, Bible used to um, uh, people uh, people used to copy the Bible with uh, calligraphic pink, um, ink and uh, ink and pen and um, uh, so that was the precursor of this um, typographic style and based on that the first typefaces were designed which ha which kind of mimics the handwritten calligraphic typefaces. So uh, China also had that but uh, uh, translating Chinese typefaces into printing press was really difficult because they have uh, thousands of different uh, characters when the characters uh, combine they become a different characters and they look different so it uh, was not so um, um, uh, useful in that, um, uh, that Chinese context, but uh, in Guten, uh, Gut, uh, English uh, typefaces, Gutenberg did that. And uh, so this is the Gutenberg's Bible, this is how it looks like. So it has a lot of influence from the calligraphic um, style of writing. So this is, uh, this calligraphic style of uh, writing has a gothic style of um, uh, typefaces. So this is called the gothic uh, style, so black letter is one of the um, gothic influenced uh, font black letter is a, a digital font but uh, this um, uh, this has uh, this mimics the gothic style of uh, uh, design so this uh, uh, if you if you know the gothic architecture and gothic uh, design um, so it has a lot of ornamentation so as in the black letter if you uh, check the black letter so you will see a lot of uh, this is not black letter, but uh, if you look at the black letters typefaces, there are a lot of ornamentation uh, in the black letter typefaces. So here also in the uh, early uh, first um, uh, digital, uh, first printed typefaces, there are a lot of ornamentation which uh, we can see in the initial stages. Now in the 15th century Italy, um, humanist writers and scholars rejected the Gothic scripts in favor of uh, the Litera Antica, a cl uh, classical mode of handwritten uh, and wider, more open forms. So from uh, this Gothical style, we are moving towards a uh, uh, different um, style of des uh, design, uh, in a different style of type, uh, typeface design, which is more minimalist. Uh, because if you look at this time frame, this is uh, the 15th century and um, gradually we are moving towards the uh, industrial evolution and after that modernism will start. So uh, gradually from this gothic style, if you uh, look at the modernist, uh, if you look at the design movement and the uh, architectural movement, gradually uh, in design and architecture and um, in uh, other aspects of uh, uh, vi uh, visual uh, design, the ornamentation started to decrease. Uh, so uh, it is going towards a minimalist w uh, way of design. So in um, uh, so Nicholas Johnson, a Frenchman who had uh, learned to print in Germany, established a printing firm in Venice around uh, 1469. His typeface merged with the Gothic traditions um, he had known in France and Germany with the Italian taste for rounder, lighter form, which is essentially minimalist. And so uh, from Gothic, a more, a more Roma, uh, um, Italian uh, style, which is uh, going to uh, be more uh, minimalist uh, style, is um, coming into the picture. So they are considered among the first and finest Roman typefaces. So uh, in uh, many fonts uh, we use today, include uh, including Garamond, Bembo, Palantino, and Jensen, are name, uh, named after the printers who walked in this 15th uh, and 16th centuries. These typefaces are generally known as humanist. So these humanist typefaces, which is uh, gradually translating from the Gothic style of typefaces, are much more uh, uh, minimal in nature, but still in this humanist typefaces, when we we'll, uh, look at the modernist typefaces, humanist typefaces uh, still have this calligraphic style. We will uh, discuss with some examples. Uh, so in humanist typefaces, this uh, letters does not have a, a very um, digitally generated uh, look. So uh, their uh, thickness and then uh, the strokes, uh, stroke thickness varies. Uh, and that, that's why it gives a human touch into the uh, typefaces. It does not look like a digital typeface. So contemporary revival of the historic fonts are designed to confront the modern technologies and current demand of the sharpness and the uniformity. So as uh, we know that in the modern um, uh, style, modern design, uh, the uh, with uh, the invention of um, um, 
new technology so uh, there was also um, post industrial revolution after post industrial revolution a lot of technology advancement started and the technology uh, technology started um, and uh, this uh, visual style in architecture as well as in design uh, started to imbibe the digitally generated technology into the uh, other uh, machine made aesthetics into the design so we know that uh, pre modern era there was this for the machine movement and also there was a counterpart against the machine movement but uh, later in this uh, ar architecture and design movement, uh, a lot of machine-made uh, aesthetics started um, uh, started to come into the picture. For example, in, if we look at Art Deco and other uh, internationalism and uh, Bauhaus, they style movement, uh, it had a lot of uh, machine-made aesthetics and uh, uh, the geometry was much more uh, predominant in the style and uh, the uniformity and uh, sharpness was um, um, uh, much more and in, in the design. So in the, um, uh, the uh, in the evolution, we can see uh, also there's another one which is the italic letters. This started coming into picture because um, uh, when we uh, start writing a lo Roman style of letter which is uh, upright and straight, versus uh, italic style which is uh, cursive which is bent. Uh, this takes lesser space, so this becomes more economic and you can. Um, print much more uh, information into a same amount of page. So this becomes a cheaper version um, of uh, printing. In 15th century in Italy, it started uh, uh, coming into picture. So uh, they started bending the typefaces. So one typeface, will, uh, typeface block will be um, like this and the other will come uh, within the uh, space of the other typefaces and it will uh, this cursive style of writing uh, takes less space. So um, uh, right now we know that uh, one type, um, uh, type uh, typeface also has a upright Roman uh, um, typefaces and uh, also the same typeface can also have a italic version. So this uh, is not just a, a tilt on um, there can also be some other uh, design elements uh, which goes with the tilt and which joins. So generally uh, when we write uh, in Roman style, so this uh, typeface doesn't join. But when we um, write in italics, so this might some some element of the previous uh, letter can join with the next letter. So in the 16th century, uh, printers started be, uh, integrating the Roman as well as the Ita italic form into the one type family. So uh, the type family is a uh, bigger umbrella where a particular typeface, for example. Uh, Helvetica or Arial or um, Calibri can have different version. One is uh, the straight Roman version, uh, version, another can be the Italic version, there can be bold, there can be ultra thin, there can be uh, light, other, um, all these versions of a particular typeface creates a type family. So uh, in 16th century onwards, a particular typeface started having these two um, different version. Now we have much more different version in the digital era. So today, italic uh, style is uh, of the most uh, font is not just simply a slanted version of the Roman. It incorporates the curve, angle, and other uh, narrow, um, uh, uh, and other design elements into the uh, design uh, into into the uh, typeface. Now, talking about the morphology of the typeface, when we uh, look at a particular letter, there are different elements of the letter. So um, if we uh, see this uh, capital and small letter together, the small letter's height. Uh, which is um, uh, which is the uh, bottom of the small letter to the uh, top part is called the x height. So if, uh, if we write x in this particular typeface, the height of x, small x, will be the x height, and the cap height is the height of the capital letter without the descender. Now uh, this part, few of the let, uh, letters have a, design, a descender like y, f. Uh, p. These parts are called descender. Now. Um, if we write x uh, in small letter, some of the small letter also has an ascender. For example, h, l, t. These are the uh, these these parts are called ascenders. Now, uh, some of the uh, letters has a cur uh, curvilinear form uh, like s, which is called spine. And some of the um, capital letters or um, other letters has a uh, droopy edge, which is called uh, terminal, and then uh, the crossbar, and uh, this is the counter um, part, which is which uh, is important to understand the free ground relationship. So this uh, background, the ground, is totally um, uh, com, uh, confined by a figure. 
And uh, so these are the uh, different elements of uh, the morphological element of a type face. Uh, now there are other th uh, things when we uh, discuss this uh, type faces. So this is how uh, uh, X height, uh, capital um, cap height, ascender, de uh, descender goes. Now there are other things too when we uh, talk about a type uh, family. So type face can be thinner, type face can be thicker. A uh, particular type uh, face can also be um, narrow, uh, ultra thin. Uh, slant. So, uh, we can play with the width of the type faces and that also uh, helps to create the hierarchy. So, when we increase the width of, uh, width of a type face, this becomes, this goes in the uh, upper level of the hierarchy. So, when the type face on the same, or with the same X side is wider, it uh, captures um, human attention more so this becomes uh, uh, this this has a higher potentiality to become a focal point in the type in in the in the uh, front end design so that uh, that augments in the hierarchy level but uh, if we increase the width in the body of the text that creates a uh, issue with the legibility so if uh, if the body of the text where uh, there are a lot of text written and the typeface is very wide uh, people will uh, feel difficulty um, while reading so if we consider this part of this um, text and um, instead of this width if we um, change the width into this without changing the cap um, x side so there will be a lot of difficulty with uh, while reading but here in this um, um, heading or where, or where we want to uh, emphasize and create the focal point or um, uh, or we want to um, give more importance in the hierarchy level then we can increase the width. Now another very important part is uh, in uh, typography is called kerning. Kerning is the horizontal space between the pair of two adjacent letter which is used to create a homogeneous visual and increased readability of the text. Now if we look at the body of the text for example just consider this uh, body of the text and if this body of the text does not look homogeneous or the uh, blackness uh, or the um, uh, the white and black proportion is not equally distributed then we uh, then it creates a dif uh, difficulty in reading so if there is a lot of white patch uh, in in between the text in uh, uh, for example if uh, th this part is uh, i have created a justified uh, mode of uh, um, later uh, so uh, if you can see this is one particular line which is um, confining the text that's why there are a lot of uh, white gaps and uneven white gaps here but if these white gaps are equally distributed that creates more legibility that um, and if there are a lot of uh, this uneven white and black uh, patches that hampers the legibility now if we look at uh, if if we consider this type um, a different um, typefaces into a very basic minimal geometric form uh, for example if uh, we consider a triangle inst uh, instead of a and if we consider uh, uh, inverted triangle in instead of um, a v, a v uh, uh, instead of O if we consider this instead of T or D or H we consider a um, uh, square then this is the these are the basic uh, forms which uh, uh, are the which are the uh, basic abstract forms of um, uh, geometric uh, forms of a uh, typeface now within this there's this uh, this acts as a backgr uh, background and this acts as a figure. So in this figure ground relationship, the amount of white in between all these letters should be equally distributed. Then we can read a particular word. Within a word, this amount of white space and the black space should be equally distributed. Then it will be uh, easy to, um, uh, uh, it will be more legible. Now if we look at uh, the case number one and case number two, here the gap between um, all the um, different typefaces are equal. But if we look at this um, situation uh, carefully, then this part, this uh, version one does not look um, homogeneous. So if you look at option one and option two carefully, option two looks more homogeneous in, in, in case um, uh, and option one does not look homogeneous. In option two what is happening, there is there's a different distance between two um, typefaces but in option one there is equal distance. But what is happening in option one because uh, in this part, this 
added part in the tri of the triangle is also adding towards the whiteness uh, of this um, uh, of the space. But here, that's why it has to be justified and it has to be minimized in case of uh, this triangle. So, and in case of uh, circle, this part this part as well as this part is adding to our um, adding in, in, into the uh, background which is the white part that is why we see the uh, circle and the triangle has the minimum uh, should have the minimum space and if we uh, draw a, a square beside another square that should have the maximum space because uh, they do not have any added uh, space in between them. So, that is why this justification and creating e uh, equal and homogeneous figure ground relationship is called uh, kerning and we have to adjust when uh, the typography designers who design the typefaces adjust this uh, uh, space uh, so that while we type this all this letter has a um, homogeneous um, gap in between them. So, this is uh, David Kinderski's uh, experiment with the kerning. So, he have uh, used different um, basic shapes and he experimented uh, with the kerning and he um, st uh, started giving a um, unified space and um, uh, he uh, proposed a unified space what uh, it should be. And then there are uh, differences between uh, serif and sans serif. We will discuss what is serif and what is sans serif. But if you look at uh, the, in, uh, the difference between these two, uh, in uh, this case, this part is added into this uh, letter, which is uh, which is called serif, uh, and which is the end of this uh, letter. And this letter does uh, the Z does not have this serif end. This is a sans serif. So now, you, if, if you look at so this O and Z here has uh, more gap than this. Why this is happening? Because when you add this uh, serif end this part of negative space is ge getting confined. Now, in this case, this part of negative uh, space is getting merged with the other negative space. So, this will appear bigger than this because this has a confined negative space and this will not appear bigger because this ap appears like one negative space and this is another negative space which is part of this um, figure. Now, this negative space does not um, uh, appear to be part of this figure because this does not have a serif end which does not confine the uh, figure. So, that is why you should uh, provide lesser space in this and more space in this case. So, you have to adjust and when you uh, design a uh, logo or you are creating uh, you are um, um, using different typefaces with different x size sometimes you need to do that uh, to uh, design the uh, front end uh, some uh, font can be you can use a bigger font with juxtapose with a smaller font then this kind of um, a sense of kerning has uh, will help you to uh, create this logo or the heading of this or even in the uh, others uh, part when you are using uh, experiment with the typography this uh, kerning is very important to create the design. Now, uh, there are different uh, uh, spacing methods uh, which um, a typograph um, designers use uh, in terms of uh, serif as well as the sans serif uh, uh, design. So, Robert uh, Slim, uh, Slimbach's method, Walter Tracy's method and Miguel Souza's method of uh, kerning is uh, three of the most important uh, methods. If you want to learn more about this, you can um, check in the, in the website and uh, check on um, Google it. So, now we will uh, come to the classification of typefaces. So, the main broad classification of typefaces are serif and sans serif. Serif typefaces looks older because when uh, uh, the uh, English letters started appearing, so it started from the Roman and the Greek uh, letters when uh, Roman, uh, uh, the Latin letters, when they started chiseling with the, um, ch uh, 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 with the hammer and the chisel on the uh, stone. So, they started creating the serif in, uh, ends because when they start uh, cutting a stone, the end uh, to create a pop proper end, they had to create some kind of ornamentation, uh, otherwise the stone used to break and creating this kind of uh, end was very difficult with the tools they are using. That is why because of the tools, they created this serif ends. And uh, when they started chiseling, so uh, they start uh, started pu uh, putting the hammer on the right uh, right hand side and the uh, chisel has a particular slant. That is why on this side of this uh, uh, serif font, 
is smaller and then the ch uh, they, they put the chisel in this um, uh, side and uh, that's why this uh, the right hand side of the letters are generally thicker and that's why you also in the o you will see a uneven distribution of the thickness and that's uh, that's because of the tools and techniques were, um, they uh, started using. So uh, that's why because uh, serif started in, in, um, uh, uh, evolved first, serif is more ornamentation, uh, ornamental and serif has a con um, association with the older style font, older style type, uh, typefaces. So always serif looks older than a sans serif. So if you want uh, to create an older look, you, you should go for a serif typeface and if you want to create a new and crisp modern look then you should go with the uh, sans serif typefaces. So sans serif, sans means uh, without, so without serif, so here in this typeface this is called Futura, Futura does not um, have a uh, serif end. Now within that there are a lot of different uh, differences, uh, within sans serif there are a lot of differences, serif also there are a lot of differences. So. Uh, uh, so as we uh, started discussing that from uh, the gothic style when the printing press uh, started evolving and uh, from the renaissance to we are going towards the uh, industrial evolution and the post industrial evolution we, uh, we, uh, when uh, there is a modern era. Uh, so humanist serif uh, uh, st typefaces started evolving and uh, so they deleted a lot of ornamentation which were there in the gothic styles for example. Um, um, black letter and then uh, in 19th century which is uh, uh, the um, just before modern uh, modernism started in around 1920s not exactly but um, on and before 1920s so that is the time when humanist typefaces uh, started evolving so humanist or the old style this is still old style because after that uh, 1920s a lot of different uh, um, typefaces started uh, coming into um, 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 uh, start uh, started coming. So uh, these old style letters uh, form a close connection with the calligraphy. So it is um, also related with the calligraphy and the movement of the uh, uh, movement of the hand. It does not give uh, uh, appear digital. The Roman typefaces of um, the 15th and 16th century um, is uh, um, uh, is ki kind of. Um, um, uh, converted into this. So Sabon is one of this um, style which is uh, uh, designed in 1966 uh, based on a 16th century typeface which is uh, of Claude Garamond. This is a uh, typeface of uh, this humanist old style. So if you look carefully this width of this uh, letter uh, A and the width here varies and also if if you look at so there are a lot of ornamentation which is not equal um, uh, not, uh, does not appear digital so it has a, con a connection with the calligraphic style and if you also look at the uh, small letter their uh, their width varies a lot and uh, here also the width width are not um, equal so that gives a connotation of a calligraphy and hand painted typefaces now the next is uh, around 19th century when uh, printers uh, started using uh, typefaces which is analogous to that of the history which performed the same uh, function but the origin is different. They started creating a different origin which is uh, uh, we know that modernism uh, started um, deleting all the classical style into the um, in, in, into their design, so they uh, they did not want to incorporate the classical style of design into the into the modernist style. So this transitional, but this process happened gradually. So this is called the tra transitional typefaces when uh, this is more abstract. More abstract means uh, more geometric than. Uh, and less biomorphic. Biomorphic is uh, ha uh, creates this curvilinear uh, line, which is uh, like whiplash lines, or um, um, or which mimics the biomorphic or the animal, the floral and faunal uh, fauna, uh, the line which comes from flora and fauna, which we see in the art nouveau and art and craft movement, which is uh, against the machine movement, which happened just before the modernist movement. So that is the time when there was a dilemma between whether to go with the machine aesthetics or the uh, or opposite so uh, this this is something in between which is more abstract and less biomorphic uh, than the uh, uh, than the humanist 
uh, type faces which we have seen just before, but more curvilinear than the modern. So when we see the modern, we'll understand uh, the style of it, and uh, this is uh, something in between. So uh, John Buskerville's uh, font Buskerville, it's an 18th century design, which is also the pre. Um, uh, still, it is not modern. So we'll go uh, to the modern era uh, after this. So it is just pre-modern, and this is one of the design of pre-modern transition uh, tunnel serif uh, typeface. Now we come to the modern uh, uh, time, which is uh, the designers of uh, the 20th century and 21st century have continued to create these new typefaces based on uh, history characteristics. Um, still, they have this um, uh, serif style, and later we'll go to the sans serif style, which will uh, when we uh, start going towards a more crisp modernism. So this is uh, late 18th century and early 19th century, and it's a radically abstract, thin and uh, abstract uh, serif. We can see a straight line coming into uh, this uh, style and another straight line coming into um, this style, and there's a lot of uh, drastic difference. So this is the thin is really thin, and the thick is really thick. So this uh, gives like a very geometric and abstract form. So and uh, this looks like a um, uh, there's a lot of difference um, and contrast and boldness into the design. And if you look at the serif ends, it's absolutely straight line. And uh, also in the uh, small um, letters, there are a lot of geometry coming into the uh, picture. So this is uh, the typeface is Bodhini, which is a modern um, typeface. Now uh, we come uh, come to the more uh, more uh, minimalist style. So here uh, they're cutting down all the added um, ornamentation from the typefaces. That's why uh, the sans serif typefaces started evolving. So there is no serif end. But still, when we um, talk about the sans serif, it again come uh, is coming from the humanist sans serif to more modern and abstract, grotesque uh, sans serif. So here we can see some curvilinear end in few letters, but uh, from some part it is not uh, it's not there. So in 19th century, um, in the late 19th century, uh, this humanist sans serif uh, style uh, started evolving, uh, mostly co commonly in uh, the 20th century. So parallelly in the architecture, uh, Ludwig Mies van der Rohe, which uh, whose uh, whose most of the archi um, architectural style and the uh, design, uh, he have also designed few furnitures, which is uh, which falls under the internationalism, which is high modern era. He uh, told that less is more. So in the modernist, high modernist uh, time, uh, the design style was. A minimalist. So less, if the uh, if there are less element in the design, that is more, and that is more beautiful. That is the um, that that is the visual style of this modernism. So Gill Sans is one of the uh, uh, typefaces which is designed by Eric Gill in 1928. So remember this. Uh, 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 we were discussing this 1920 onwards is uh, kind of we started modernism. So it, this is one decade, almost one decade after modernism, when uh, these sans serif fonts are really very important in this. Uh, uh, era. Then the transitional sans serif or the grotesque or the neo grotesque uh, sans serif, these are also referred as the um, anonymously uh, the sans serifs. And uh, this typography uh, style is a Swiss uh, style and which is quite contemporary with the ba uh, Bauhaus and their style movement and uh, with the uh, Kandinsky's painting and Mondrian's of the contemporary painters in their style movement and Bauhaus. So this is quite contemporary uh, for that. And uh, also uh, one of the designers, uh, 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 Max Medienger uh, in 1957, which is also uh, the middle or the late part of uh, this modernism. Um, he have designed Helvetica, which is one of the famous typefaces, uh, and this is Helvetica, and this looks more uh, modern than the uh, humanist uh, sans serif. In humanist sans serif, there are some optical uh, corrections so, so, so that you can see a difference in the small letters A. Uh, the width difference is there, but if you look at this small letter A, the width difference is highly um, uh, decreased. Now, still, this width difference is there because if this is this uh, width of this part and this part comes like uh, equal, and then there will be a black patch over there. So, if when there's a join of two arm of this uh, of, of, of a letter, and if there, if if we don't decrease the width, then uh, there uh, there will be a black patch created. So uh, to, uh, to create this 
optical illusion um, uh, you have to decrease the width so just because of that the width is uh, decreased but um, uh, otherwise this has a much more homogeneous width all over the tie faces now the more geometric uh, from the grotesque we go to the more geometric sensor which is absolutely geometric and uh, which is uh, uh, called uh, one of the typefaces is Futura uh, which is designed by Paul Rayner though it is in 1927 but it looks more geometric than the previous uh, uh, example. Uh, so uh, it's uh, we cannot fit everything into the proper timeline and how it goes because many of the typefaces comes later and a few of the typefaces which is which looks modern can come uh, can be designed uh, uh, before because uh, together from 1920s uh, to uh, 1980s this is the modernist time where uh, the visual style was more towards the minimalism so here if we look at uh, the A has a very sharp edge uh, which we uh, don't see in the previous styles. Uh, so it is absolutely geometric, it is, um, it is chiseled out from a triangle. Also the small letter A is absolutely geometric which is there uh, just a combination of rectangle and circle. But the same principle is uh, again added here so uh, it just tapers a little bit so that to create uh, avoid the black patch over here. Otherwise if you again join it like that so there will be a bold black patch and then if you uh, use this small letter so th then there will be a lot of black patch on the these areas so just to avoid that this kind of uh, op, uh, design is created otherwise this is totally uh, if we look at if we type something uh, from uh, in this future typeface uh, so you will see all the letters are uh, derivative of uh, pure geometric form now uh, from the late part of 19th uh, century uh, the lat uh, later part and uh, the 20th century's earlier earlier part uh, we come into the post modernism which is after modern and that time uh, which is uh, just af uh, which is after the um, uh, world war modernism is uh, around the time of world war and the post modernism was just uh, uh, after the world war when the socio cultural context was very different and that time again uh, from uh, minimalism there were a lot of ornamentation started coming into picture so if we look at the history and art history or the design history or architectural history so it goes uh, simultaneously and this occurs uh, one after other so once uh, once if the movement talks about minimalism the next movement might add more ornamentation and the next movement again delete the ornamentation so this goes on uh, in the in, in a loop so in postmodernism uh, one of the postmodern architect robert venturi uh, describes it as a less is bore so that was the theme and the motto of the postmodernism so less um, element if the, there is less element this is a boring design so postmodernist architect designers and uh, the uh, typographer they started incorporating lot of element into the again the elements are uh, elements started coming back into pic, uh, picture so if we look at the uh, we have discussed the visual style and the design style also uh, there are a lot of ornamentation coming into the uh, picture which is uh, in pops uh, pop movement and other postmodernist movement so egyptian or the slab uh, uh, serif is one of the uh, uh, style of postmodern fonts which we see in the display typography or the neon sign boards uh, this kind of type uh, typefaces are there because it grabs people's attention and uh, because of the serif ends so they, they have a very thick serif and they have um, uh, enhanced the ornamentation part uh, uh, in such a level that it looks like a slab so it has almost a similar width of a main body of the text and the serif uh, in the in the small letters are um, extended to create a, a, a very ornate um, uh, expression so Clarendon is one of the these typefaces. So these are a few typefaces which are uh, good typefaces from different uh, style Clarendon, Gilsans, uh, Helvetica, Futura, Bodini, Baskerville, Sa uh, Sabon. These are some, some of the very good typefaces, well designed typefaces which you can use according to your theme. 
so uh, this classification also where uh, we will uh, uh, we, we can see uh, right now we are in digital age so one particular typeface if you see uh, for example we are, are discussing about universe this can have a lot of different variation to create the hierarchy of the typefaces so it can go ultra light to very uh, thin uh, very thick extended black and different uh, uh, styles with uh, upright roman to uh, italics and a lot of uh, different variations are available right now to, uh, within a particular typefaces. So in the next class we will discuss how to use all these typefaces and uh, based on the knowledge of this uh, lecture we will uh, apply this and we will see how we use typefaces in the digital um, GUI or the uh, user interface.